Friends, welcome to this daily devotion for Friday, December 18th, 2020. I'm Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time of daily devotion, where we can grow together in love of God and love of neighbor. I ask that you consider liking this video and sharing it, so that maybe somebody else who needs it may hear a good word of encouragement and the word of good news in their lives today. Join me in the invocation as we center ourselves and invite God into our presence today. My God, what joy it is when you come to us in daily visitation. What peace is ours when by your coming we find life anew. Come, O come, to live with us and reign within, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this week has been Psalm 65 as we explore our theme, When God comes. Again, not if God comes, but when. Expecting and anticipating Christ anew in our lives this Christmas tide. Starting up at verse 10. Drenching the earth's furrows, leveling its ridges. You soften it with rain showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness. Your pass overflow with rich food. Even the desert pastures drip with it. And the hills are dressed in pure joy. The meadowlands are covered with flocks. The valleys decked out in grain. They shout for joy. They break out in song. May God bless the reading of the scripture today. You crown the year with goodness. I've seen a lot of things on social media recently about, you know, people just can't wait to get out of 2020. A lot of memes and other things. I'm so done with 2020. I can't wait for it. But what if God crowns the year with goodness? What if that song is true for 2020? You know, I think we're all too often eager to get away from the bad experiences, to get away from the things that trouble us, instead of living with them, living through them, and living better because of them, learning from the things that we haven't done so well. Those who do not know or learn history are doomed to repeat it. And knowing enough about history, I have seen humanity repeat the same things over and over and over and over and over again. Just in the stories from the prophets, you can read in Kings and Chronicles, just this cycle of good king, bad king, good king, bad king. You'd think they would have learned after a few couple hundred centuries but no because we don't want to be in that uncomfortableness we don't want to work through our grief or even approach i I mean i've talked about with my parents my uh my parents are 80 and 79 jennifer's mother is uh 70 or my parents are 80 and 78 jennifer's mother is 79 We've talked with all three of our parents about end of life. I understand that's not comfortable. But they're not going to live forever. Jennifer and I have talked about end of life. What happens if we die? We cannot afford to not talk about it. Because things can happen. And then where will our daughter with special needs be taken care of? She can't just go live with anybody. I've known people in their 90s who have never talked about end-of-life planning. I mean, folks, at some point, it's going to happen. I don't know how long it might be. You might live to be 120, but at some point. I know people who have never dealt with grief from the loss of a loved one. End up struggling with addiction. Many, many of us don't deal with the icky things. 
I have nothing against anyone who's gone through a divorce. I believe that not all marriages need to last, especially when there's abuse and lies and manipulation. I believe that most people probably shouldn't be married, but that's a different conversation. But I know all too many people who have gotten divorced and then immediately gotten into another relationship that was almost exactly the same as their previous relationship because they never spent time dealing with what went wrong. It was just the other person's fault. And in some cases, yes, but in many just kind of normal divorce situations, there are two people at fault. And so we need to learn, but we don't want to be uncomfortable, so we don't. I see it in my children. They love doing what they're good at, but they don't want any time to focus on what they're bad at. How true is that for us? All of that to say, maybe God can crown 2020 with goodness if you allow God to do that. I mean, God can do that regardless of what you think. But maybe it can be a good year for you if you allow God to make it a good year. We still got a couple weeks. I know for me, in the midst of all of this, there have been blessings. And right now, I am blessed by so many things. How have you been blessed, even in the midst of this chaos and in the midst of this grief and suffering and perhaps loss that you have experienced? Our final scripture reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. Nonetheless, those who were in distress won't be exhausted. At an earlier time, God cursed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But later he glorified, that was awful, he glorified the way of the sea, that far side of the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in pitch black land, light has dawned. You have made the nations great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff at their shoulders and the rod of their oppressors. Because every brute of the thundering warriors, every garment rolled in blood will be burned. Fuel for the fire. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. All authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named. Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Eternal Father. Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing it and sustaining it with justice and and righteousness now and forever. May God bless the reading of the prophet, even with my butchering of one of those words. I don't know if you've ever heard the Messiah, uh, Handel's Messiah. I've uh, had the privilege of singing in it more than once. Uh, I think I still have a college recording of my college choir singing it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I love when they get to uh, this affirmation, this prophecy, a child born to us, a son given to us, a wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father. These are the promises of Advent, the promises of the prophecies, the promises of scripture that a child will be born. Not just to somebody, but to all people. Jesus, that, that baby Jesus is all of our sons. And yet, he is father to us all and Lord of us all. It's, it's a weird paradoxical relationship that Jesus is master and friend, king and brother, father and child. 
and I think the best way to kind of wrap your head around that is Jesus is all in all. He's everything you need. If there's nothing else, if you've lost everything, if you have no one in your life, you still have Christ. He's still there. He's still present in your life. You are still connected to God through the Holy Spirit. That can never be taken. But it also offers so much more. It offers us a way to understand how to be the very best child, parent, friend, ruler, or leader. If that's a position that we're in, Jesus shows it all. He literally demonstrates how to do everything in his life, in his words, in his very being. And and I encourage you, as beautiful and poignant and wonderful as the words of Christ are, and I am so blessed we have so many of them, his actions are as vastly important. I wouldn't say more important, but as important. Because he demonstrates, what does it mean to be a son? Now, we don't have a lot of stories about him, but the ones we do show us what it means to be a son. Even in his younger age, obviously, he son to God the Father. What does it mean to be a parent? What does it mean to be a friend? What does it mean to be a servant leader? There's so much. And if, if you let Christ in your life, if you anticipate and expect that he's going to be the present under the tree this year, you will open up so much to your life. You know, I've been struggling um, just with, you know, just with this stuff we have. And, and uh, you know, Jennifer and I always go back, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? And I, I try to get her something. I love her. We love giving each other gifts. But um, I just got so much stuff. I mean, uh, you can see it behind me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's there, this is stuff, right? Um, and, it you know, Marie Kondo, it brings me joy. But there's just so much of it. Uh but what's most important isn't the stuff. The stuff doesn't really change who I am or, or, or impact me in any meaningful way. It is, it is Christ who does all of that. Christ who truly gives us all in all. Let's read another... Uh, now let's read this a little passage from Soul of My Soul by Catherine de Huick Dotery. I think that's how you say it. Where there is love, there is pain. But whatever our walk in life, this kind of pain is God's way of teaching us how to pray. Everything that happens to us spiritually, everything that causes us to grow, will bring us closer to God if we say yes. This is what spiritual growth means. It doesn't come from what we do, necessarily, from all our actions and good works. Sometimes it comes from simply sitting and seeing the shambles of what we tried to accomplish, from watching what was seemingly God's work go to pot. Her words, not mine. You can't do anything about it, but watch. This happened to me. I knew dimly then what I see more clearly today that this was the moment when God really picked me up and said, now I'm offering you the union you seek. The other side of my cross is empty. Come, be nailed upon it. This is our marriage bed. And we can answer in response to that invitation. Help me, God. I don't have the courage to climb the cross. God bless that reading. And again, if you spend time with, especially with the female mystics in our tradition, uh, there's a lot of imagery that probably would make a lot of us rural, uh, well, not rural, but Midwestern Christians a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, and I think that's good. We need to be made uncomfortable every once in a while. And I think that passage certainly uh, might make some of us uncomfortable. But as I've said before, looking back at this year, maybe... There's nothing to do but watch things fall apart and pray and hope for what God can do with the pieces. 
Today we pray for us, friends. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to be centered so that we can, if we if we have any hope of helping others, and maybe through all of this, the only thing we need to do is make sure that we are okay. And, and that might be enough. But if we have a desire to help other people, then we need to definitely be centered. So regardless, whether it's just for you or whether it's for others in your life, your family, your friends, others who you don't know, we all need to be centered and focused in Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, today we come to you praying for our very selves. I pray for all those watching this video, listening to my words, that they may be encouraged, that they may find your peace that they may be renewed today and every day, and that they may anticipate and expect your coming this Advent, this Christmas tide, this Epiphany, even this coming Easter, into the new year. We pray this in your holy name, praying the prayer your Son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this weekend, Pastor Wesley concludes his Advent series on the prophets by uh, going over all the minor prophets. I'm looking forward to that. Helping us understand by looking back and seeing these beautiful prophecies that there is truth in understanding what Christ's coming is all about as we approach Christmas Day and Christmas Tide, the 12 days or season of Christmas. So join us 9 a.m. live on YouTube or Facebook, or you can watch the video whenever, but this Sunday uh, for another worship experience, and then uh, here on Monday as well. Hear the benediction. My Lord, let me go to my appointed place, there to live and work in the unity of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Until next week, friends, goodbye.